Hello and welcome back to another video with Planes on the Prairie. We haven't done a video in quite a few months actually. And we've been mostly doing our North Dakota Aces podcast series, which I hope you guys check out. The link will be in, in the description and one of those will be out this coming Monday, so we're excited to do that. So behind me we have the oldest aircraft in the Fargo Air Museum's collection. This is a standard J-1. So the standard J-1 is a two-seat trainer that was used to supplement the famous JN-4 Jenny built by Curtis. They were produced from 1916 until 1918, and we're just going to go through a, a little bit of the aircraft by doing a walk around. We'll have some B-roll footage over the voiceover, and we'll actually get to look inside the engine too, so that'll be really exciting to be able to do. So we'll talk a little bit first about the differences between the J-1 and the JN-4 Jenny. They're mostly misidentified as Jennies, these standards are. Um, a lot of people that you know come through on tours uh, misidentify it, which is okay. We'll just uh, run through the differences here. So I'll have some, uh, we'll probably get some overlay with uh, some of the differences on a little bit of a, just to provide more of a visual. So one of the differences is the wing sweep. You might not be able to tell at this angle. We'll have an overlay picture here for you too. Uh, the wings are slightly swept back, whereas on the Jenny it was more of a straight line wing. And then also the gear position is a little bit different. It's not as far forward on the standard. And additionally, we have uh, king posts on top of the wing that are more in a triangular shape. Where on the standard, or on the excuse me, on the Jenny, uh, they would be more of a rectangular shape. There's two vertical bars, one going across. So those are the main differences. And uh, now we're going to walk around the aircraft and go over the history of the J1. All right, so now we're going to go into the history and general info on the standard J1. So right behind me here, we have uh, Curtis OX-5. This is not the standard engine that would go in the standard. Sorry for the joke there. Uh, so the, the standard originally was equipped with the Hall Scott A7A, which is a 100 horsepower inline four-cylinder engine. Uh, it had the unfortunate tendency to catch fire and uh, gave the standard a really poor reputation. So what resulted there was the U.S. Army Air Service grounding all of the standards and the service just rolled with the JN-4s. But then later in the war they were going to swap the, J, or the A7A engines for these Curtis OX-5s that were uh, originally prioritized to the, uh, to the Jennies and uh, they ended up getting can an order for 2,000 of those canceled and uh, just due to the end of the war and without the need for production why build them? And uh, all in all, there was 1,600 of these trainers built. Many of them survived the scraps or anything like that, and they ended up being uh, airmail aircraft, uh, personal uh, aircraft for barnstorming, or or uh, planes for flight training. And uh, many of them actually still survive today. There's um, Kermit Weeks that is still restoring one. Uh, there is one that was at Oshkosh last year when I went there. So there's a few around. So it's good to see. But yeah, we'll uh, give a little bit of a pan over of the engine as well here. This standard has been a North Dakota bird for most of its life. The earliest documented history we could find on it was actually in Charles Klesig, the former owner of this aircraft, autobiography called My Highway in the Sky. And he saw it as a kid in the 20s at, down in Wahpeton, and he ended up wanting, wanting to buy it at some point, and it didn't happen back then. And uh, later on, he found it in Fairmont in the 70s, and ended up restoring it along with another uh, standard as well. So he actually won the 1971 Grand Champion uh, Award at Oshkosh that year. And so it was a very well-kept aircraft back in its day when it was flying around. And uh, he actually appeared in a couple of uh, one, one TV show and a commercial series. And he was in the short run TV show called Bearcats. And it's in the uh, intro of, of, the, of the, theme, the theme song for the show that you can see it flying around doing some acrobatics some low level passes it's really cool and also it ended up being orange at one point in its life for the Tijuana Small Cigarette Company and there's a, a video of it taxiing around and stuff so that's pretty cool we'll attach the links to uh, both the intro to Bearcats and the Tijuana Smalls commercial and we'll have some stills in this video and uh, later on it ended up just flying around doing flying all over to fly-ins while Charles was alive and when he passed it ended up going to Bonanzaville for a short time and it's been here for over 10 years now and um, it's been a really cool part of our collection here and um, 
we'll probably have a video about Charles at some point. He's a really big pioneer here of aviation, North, Eastern North Dakota especially. And we thank you guys for tuning into this video. We're glad to be back bringing these to you and hopefully keep them going here throughout the winter. And thanks for watching.